This video is all about finding domain and range from a graph. Before we take a look at the graph, I want to remind you about what is domain and what is range. The domain are all of the possible x values that the graph takes on. Those are the set of inputs. And the range are basically all of the y coordinates or the y values the graph takes on. Those are the outputs. So when we go to the graph and we're looking for domain, we really are talking about what is happening along the x axis right here that I have in blue for you. That is why we are going to be looking at domain in terms of what is happening in the x values from left to right. Because in the coordinate plane, the numbers get bigger from left to right. Then in terms of range, we're going to be reading the graph from bottom to top. And that is because the numbers for the y's on the y axis, they get larger bottom to top. So when you go to find domain, you're going to look for domain left to right. And when you're going to go find the range, you're going to read the graph from the bottom to top. Okay, from the bottom to the top. Let's take a look at the example that you have in front of you. Let's start first with the domain, which are the possible x values. Notice there's a clear starting point to my graph. That is the point negative 5, comma 5. My graph starts at negative 5. Then it's going to go down and then it's going to start curving back up until it continues to go down, 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 down. That arrow indicates it's going to continue forever. So right now I have a clear beginning. My lowest value is going to be negative 5 at the start right there at that endpoint. In terms of interval notation, I am including that negative 5. So I'm going to write a bracket. So it's going to be negative 5 comma. Then remember there was a graph everywhere and it's going to continue towards positive infinity on the x axis. So that means my domain is from negative 5 to positive infinity. If you were to write this in set builder notation or inequality notation, that means your domain are all the x values that are greater than or equal to negative 5. In terms of the range, the range are the y values. You have to read that bottom to top. So bottom to top, this graph comes from negative infinity and then it takes on all of these values until I get to positive 5, which is the largest y value the graph takes on. That is why the range in this particular example is going to be from negative infinity until I get to positive 5, and it does include positive 5. With inequality notation, I'm going to write this as all the y values that are less than or equal to 5. Now, this is one of the more challenging concepts in algebra for you to be able to see this graph and understand left to right, what is domain, and bottom to top, what is the range. So there are several examples that we're going to be going through in this video so that you can hopefully get the hang of it. Let's go ahead and try this one. We're going to start with the domain. Domain we read left to right. From the left, there is a clear starting point. And notice there is an open circle right here. This is the point negative 3 comma 0. And there's no more graph after that. OK, it just basically starts at that point. But because there is an open circle, that means that in my domain, I'm going to start at negative 3, but in interval notation, I'm going to use a parentheses because I'm not including that negative 3. Then the graph continues. It takes on a graph. It continues until it gets to this point right here, and the graph ends. That is the point 1, comma, negative 4. So there is a graph up until I get to the x value of positive 1. Because that circle is shaded in, that means that I do include that positive 1. If I were to write this in inequality notation, I basically want all the x's that are less than or equal to 1 and greater than negative 3, meaning everything that is between negative 3 and 1, not including the negative 3, but including the positive 1. Let's talk about the range. In terms of the range, we read bottom to top. 
So at the bottom, notice the lowest possible y value the graph ever takes on is negative 4. And both of those are going to be included, so I'm going to write negative 4 with a bracket in interval notation. Then the graph is going to go up, it comes down, and it goes up. Notice what is the maximum, what is the highest y value the graph takes on. That's going to happen right here. And the highest value the graph takes on on the y-axis is 0. Now, you do see right here that we have an open circle. Okay, I'm going to erase some of these marks so that it's clear for you. Notice that there is an open circle. That means that it is not defined at that point, which we said was the point negative 3 comma 0. However, if you notice, there is another spot where there is a 0 as a y value right here. This is the point 0, 0. Because there is at least one place where the graph does take on a y value that's equal to 0, that means that I am going to include the 0 with a bracket. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Even though you have an open circle right here at negative 3, 0, there is a place where 0, 0 is defined or where y does take on a value of 0 and therefore I can include it. So in terms of inequality notation, because it's range, it's the y values, I want all the y values that are between 0 and negative 4. And of course, you have to write the smaller number on the left. So I want all the y values that are greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than or equal to 0. In this next example, we also are going to read this graph left to right. And there is also a very clear beginning. So my domain, I'm starting at this point, which is the point negative 4, comma, negative 2. Then the graph takes off and it continues forever because of the arrow that indicates that it's moving towards positive infinity. So that means that my domain is going to be bracket negative 4. That's the smallest x value it takes on until I get to positive infinity. As an inequality, this means x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Let's talk about the range. What's the lowest y value the graph takes on? That is going to be at negative 2. So the range is going to be from negative 2, and it's moving towards also positive infinity. So that means that the range are all the y values that are greater than or equal to negative 2. At any point in this video, when you see a new graph come on, press pause to see if you can come up with the answer before I give it to you. Let's take a look at this graph right here. We read left to right. What is happening left to right? Notice that there is a point and it's moving. The graph is moving towards negative infinity. So left to right, as I move left to right, I am coming from negative infinity. So my domain is coming from negative infinity and it's going to stop when I get to positive one and I do include that positive one. That means that I want all of the x values that are less than or equal to one. In terms of the y's, the lowest y value the graph takes on is zero and then it's continuing towards positive infinity. So that means that my range starts at zero and it continues to positive infinity. That means all the y values that are greater than or equal to zero. In this next problem, to figure out the domain, it's left to right. From the left, I have a clear starting point. I'm going up, it's kind of like a part of a parabola, and then it comes down. There's an open circle right here at the point two comma zero, and then this point is the point negative three, negative five. So my domain, I'm starting when x is negative 3, and I am including that negative 3 until I get to positive 2. Now, positive 2, I am not going to include in my domain because there is no other place where x does equal 2. Okay, so it is going to go ahead and be a parenthesis in terms of inequality. This means all of the x values that are basically greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than positive 2. The range. The range is lowest to highest. The lowest value the graph takes on is negative 5, 
and the highest value is positive 4. What happens in this case? Because there is a place in the graph between negative 5 and positive 4 where there's an empty like a point basically there's this open circle. The fact that right here there is another point that is included in the graph that also has a y value of 0 that tells me I don't need to break up the range. Okay the range is just going to be lowest to highest which in this case is from negative 3 to positive 4 and then include both of these values. So negative 3 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 4. Go ahead and try this problem on your own. The domain starts at the lowest x value, which in this case we're going to say is this point right here, which is negative 2 comma 10. Now we don't know exactly, it kind of looks a little off to be quite honest with you. And so because it doesn't look like it's exactly at negative 2, I'm going to say negative 2.1 comma 10. And usually when they want an exact answer, they're going to have to give it to you. They're going to have to tell you what that value, what that point is. Right now we're just approximating. So that's going to be my lowest value. And so my domain, because that is the smallest x value the graph takes on, I'm going to have a parenthesis because there's no other place that is going to take on that negative 2.1. And again, we're just estimating it. And then the graph continues all the way towards positive infinity as indicated by that arrow. So this means that I want all the x values that are greater than negative 2.1. In terms of the range, which is the y values, it is very clear that the lowest y value the graph is ever going to take on is going to be negative 4. And it does include negative 4. And then because of this right arrow right here, that tells me that this graph is going towards positive infinity. So I want all the y values that are greater than or equal to negative 4. This problem again, domain, is all the x values. So left to right, this one I think is a little bit easier because it's very clear. I'm starting at this point, which is the point negative 5 comma 2. And I end when I get to this point, which is 3 comma 2. OK, so my domain is going to be everything between negative five, including negative five, because it's closed. That circle is shaded in all the way till I get to positive three and a positive three. It's going to be a parenthesis because of the open circle. That means all the X values that are between negative five and three, including the negative five, but not including the three. And then in terms of the range, the lowest value the graph takes on looks to be here at zero. So it's going to be 0. And then the highest value is 2. Remember what I told you. Because of the fact that this is a closed circle at 2, it doesn't matter that this one is open at 2. There is at least one place where the graph takes on a 2 as a y value. And so therefore, my range is from 0 to 2, including the 0 and the 2. In this particular case, go ahead and try this problem on your own. The domain is from negative 4 to positive 4. So x is greater than or equal to negative 4, less than or equal to 4. And the range, this one's actually fairly easy, is from 0 to positive 2. And it includes both the 0 and the 2. In this particular case, from left to right, there is a clear beginning and a clear end. This point is the point 2, 8. This is the point 8, 6. So I'm starting at x is 2. That's the lowest x value. But because of the open circle, I'm not including the 2. And it goes all the way until x is 8. And it does include the 8. So that means 2 is less than x, less than or equal to 8. As far as the range is concerned, that's the y values. The lowest y value the graph takes on, it's at 6. And then the highest value it takes on is at 8. But in this case, it is going to be a parenthesis because of that open circle. There's absolutely no other place that it's going to have an 8 as a y value. So this means that the y's are numbers that are greater than or equal to 6, but it has to be less than 8. Okay, in this problem, we're starting at negative 4. So that means my domain is negative 4. And because of the arrow, it's pointing that it's going towards positive infinity. 
That means I want all the x values that are greater than or equal to negative 4. The range is also pretty simple. The lowest y value here is 0, and it's going towards positive infinity. So the range is from 0 to positive infinity. That means all the y values that are greater than or equal to 0. And we save the best for last, last but not least. Take a look at what's happening in this particular case. There is a clear beginning and a clear end on this left part of this reciprocal function graph. And thankfully, they gave us the actual value so that we don't have to estimate ourselves. So far, the domain, it starts at negative 6, and then it continues up until I'm approaching this asymptote. So it kind of stops right here, and that x value, they told me, is negative 1, 6. And it is shaded, so I am going to go ahead and include that. So an in inequality notation, it's basically everything that is between negative 6 and negative 1, 6. Then I also have another part, which is the second right side of this graph. And it starts at positive 1, 6, and it continues until it gets to positive 6. In terms of interval notation, the way you connect two pieces is with a U for union. In terms of the inequalities, you join them with the word or. So in this case, it's going to be union positive 1, 6, all the way to positive 6. And here, I'm going to just go ahead and write down 1, 6 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 6. So that's my domain. Let's go ahead now and talk about the range. The range are the y values. Here, clearly, the lowest y value is negative 6. And then the highest y value is going to get to negative 1, 6. So the range is going to be from negative 6 to negative 1, 6, union. And then here, the lowest y value is positive 1, 6. And it goes all the way up until positive 6. So it's going to be union from 1, 6 all the way to positive 6. And what's funny is that you're going to end up actually with the same exact domain and the same exact range. In inequality notation, that means negative 6 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to negative 1, 6. Or that tells me that 1, 6 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to positive 6. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.